Are you struggling to raise your kids to speak more than one language? Let me show you how we do it, and hopefully you can pick up some hints for yourself. Welcome to Ask Tetsu. I was raised in multiple languages, and today I am sharing tips on how I am raising my own four kids in five languages. Now, before I get a series of comments on the opening clip of this video along the lines of, you know, any kid can say welcome to Ask Tetsu in five languages, I'll link up a playlist right here of our kids speaking each of their five languages in, you know, real life situations. And I invite you to scrutinize those to your heart's content. And now let's get into today's video. I've made many individual videos on this channel about different methods that we use to raise multilingual kids. So today I thought I'd make one video that sort of brings everything together in a kind of a summary format. So let's start with uh, the first thing I want to talk about, which is uh, our conceptual framework or the sort of the overarching strategy uh, to get our kids to learn the five languages. Um, so here we apply two relatively famous methods. The first one is called minority language at home and the other is called one person, one language or OPO for, for short. Now both of these methods are, are quite popular and have been shown to be very effective uh, in raising multilingual and well, bilingual and multilingual kids. So in our case, we live in Quebec, Canada. So the community language there is French. That's uh, schools, neighbor, friends, etc. And there are also some Anglophones, uh, member, Anglophone members in the community. So the kids do use some English with certain friends, sports, coaches, uh, etc. Now, however, in the house, we speak to the kids in Japanese and Mandarin. And so that, by definition, is minority language at home. Now, furthermore, I only speak Mandarin with the kids, while my wife Yuko only uses Japanese. So that's so this way of uh, attributing a specific language to a specific person is, is the basis of OPO, no, one person, one language again. Now, we extend this hybrid minority language at home and an OPO strategy to one more language by bringing in au pairs from Mexico. So au pairs are basically live-in nannies and they speak to the kids exclusively in Spanish. And there you go, that's this hybrid minority language at home plus OPO strategy allows us to set up a, a living context that compels the kids to use all five of their language on a daily basis in a very natural way. Now, uh, another way to strengthen the kids Japanese and Mandarin is direct immersion. So the second pillar uh, is also a very simple idea. Basically every year we live in Quebec for eight months. So that's from the start of the school year in September to around the end of April. Uh, then we move the entire family to Nagasaki, Japan, where uh, Yuko is from, uh, where, actually, where we are right now actually. And uh, we stay there generally for two months, so May and June, uh, uh, where the kids would attend the local school and then uh, get a tremendous boost in their Japanese language skills. Then typically we would go to Taiwan for another two months, so that's July and August, and the kids would attend like a summer school slash camp, summer camp kind of thing, and uh, there they would boost their Mandarin skills. And we would all sort of come back to Quebec uh, to start the cycle all over again uh, around late, late August. Now, that said, uh, 2019 was actually the last time we went to Taiwan because of, of course, COVID-19 travel restrictions. So 2020 and then this year, um, we, we just couldn't go to Taiwan. So hopefully we'll be able to go next year in 2022. And so now finally, let me talk about all the miscellaneous techniques that we carry out in our daily lives to complement the first two that we mentioned earlier. There's really nothing out of the ordinary uh, in this third pillar, um, but I'll just sort of describe them to you to give you a sense of how we apply these real life, uh, all these real life tactics to strengthen our children's language skills. So the first one that comes to mind is obviously TV. kids spend a significant amount of time watching TV uh, and I wouldn't be exaggerating I think if I said that 80 to 90 percent of our kids English skills actually come from TV they, they every most of the things that they watch 
on TV or in English. So it's, it's, it's really the, the, the language of choice also when we all spend time together as a family to watch Netflix, uh, cartoons on, on YouTube, etc. Now, uh, we also do try to push them to watch lots of things in Mandarin as much as possible. Uh, again, to, to complement uh, this, this lack of exposure in Taiwan from last year and this year. I've made a whole separate video on the topic of using TV as a legitimate way to get kids to learn languages, so if you're interested, I'll link it right up here. The next thing we uh, use a lot are language apps. Uh, there are quite a few out there uh, that allows kids to learn reading and writing in Japanese and in Chinese. Uh, some get the kids to learn how to pronounce certain characters. Others get them to practice writing, uh, for example, by tracing the characters, etc. Now, the key is, is really to find apps that are fun, uh, like getting kids to score points, uh, uh, this type of gamification really is quite effective. Next, since last year, the kids have been taking online lessons on italki, which is a kind of a platform that allows language teachers and students to, to get matched. What is the second one? The third one. 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 Yeah. Originally, this idea was a way for us to get the kids to maintain their Mandarin last year, since again, we couldn't go to Taiwan. Uh, but it turned out to be such an effective method that, you know, uh, we decided to continue. I mean, importantly, the kids enjoy it. So, so we've simply continued uh, doing this since last summer. We've been doing this for, for about a year now. Uh, we've tried out a few teachers at the beginning and have stuck with two very good ones uh, ever since. And again, I would like to emphasize the key is to find something that's enjoyable for the kids and also work with these teachers to come up with materials that will keep them engaged uh, that, that's for the, the sustainability of this technique. Similar to italki in terms of this one-on-one uh, -on -one video call, uh, we also get our past au pairs to talk to our kids periodically in Spanish during times like for example right now when we don't have au pairs with us uh, from, from Mexico. So they can sort of serve as a virtual babysitter, so to speak. Last but not least, we have also been using traditional print material, so that's posters, books, uh, etc. And uh, Yuko also goes on online and prints out games and drills uh, from the internet. Now, I guess there's really not much for me to develop on this uh, subject, I mean it's, it's quite self-explanatory. So that in a nutshell are the various techniques that we employ to raise our kids in five languages. But I do want to mention that there are many techniques out there, uh, some of which I discuss in, in other videos uh, on this channel. For example, this one. So I don't want you to get too bogged down on the specific uh, techniques that we use per se. What's important again is to know what's out there and choose methods that actually fit your family circumstances and your kids personality and their, what, what their, their preferences. Uh, and, and, and another important aspect is your language objectives. Where do you want to go with this? As a matter of fact, I would love to know about your family and your strategies to raise bilingual or multilingual children. So please comment below. Now, if you want to get more details on the various methods that I talked about today, I have a whole playlist down in that corner on the various concepts and strategies that we employ in raising our multilingual kids. If you've already seen that, you want to see something different, well, YouTube thinks that you should see this video right below this window. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.